Goedemorgen, zondag die 28ste juni. Ons is amper dier die winter, ons is op pad na, na uh, somer toe weer. Kan jy dit glo. Maar ik vertrouw jullie het een goede juni gehad en dat jullie zien uit naar juli toe. Um, en ik vertrouw jullie die laatste week was ook een goede week voor elk een van jullie. Baie aan jullie gedink en jy moet weet, ek het vir julle gebid hierdie week soos wat ek dier my verantwoordelijkheidslijst dier werk dier die week. Um, baie geluk aan allemaal wat vir jaar hierdie week en dankie aan uh, Katrine en Ewit en die kinders vir die wonderlijke welkoming gebed en, 
en opening wat hulle vir ons hierdie week gedoen het. Baie dankie julle, en uh, ek gaan ook ons hoop dat daar afkondiging gaan kom weer uh, van, van die regering af, oor uh, wat ons mag met die dienste doen, en ons, ons bid rechtig, dat um, die regulaties, die protocollen verander gaan wees, dat ons een besluit binnenkort gaan maak, en dan vir julle laat weet, wat gaan aan met kerkbijwoning, en die, miskien die opening van ons dienste op een zondag. Maar weer dat ons vir julle bid, en weet ook dat ek en die reis van die leiderskap, Marlies, is beskikbaar vir julle, ons is net een oproep weg, as jy enigszins enige hulp nodig het, geestelik, emotioneel, bel ons asjeblief, ons kan na julle toe rui, en ons kan saam met julle kom sit en bid, en bemoedig ook. So asjeblief, bel ons, laat weet vir ons, of daar enige behoefte is, en ons sal uitkom na julle toe, so gauw as moendlik. Uh, nou hierdie sondag, is ek baie opgewonde oor die woord, wat die Heere op my haar geleed, en uh, um, kom ons slaan somme af, uh, blaai saam met my, kom ons begin, Matthies hoofstuk 7, um, maar miskien voor jylle daar blaai twee plekke, Philippense 3, Philippians chapter 3, and then Matthew chapter 7, so get one finger into Philippians 3, and one finger in Matthew 7, and the majority of my sermon is going to come from Matthew 7, but just my introduction is from Philippians 3. And the title of my sermon is To Build on the Rock for the Storms. Build on the Rock for the Storms. En ons weet, in hierdie leeftijd, terwijl ons lewe, terwijl ons asemal, gaan ons zwaar tye beleef, ons gaan probleme beleef, die Heere, Jesus Christus sê vir ons, in hierdie wereld, gaan jylle moeilijkheid hee, jylle gaan probleme hee. En die Heere sê dit vir ons, en ons moet het besef, en ons moet daarvoor voorbereid, en dit is hoe kom ek vir jylle vir ochendse boodskap wil, um, wil deel. Maar, eindelijk op een meer persoonlijke note, wil ek uit Philippense 3, eerste vir jylle lees, en vanaf vers 17, Philippians 3, en uh, from verse 17. Uh, let me just read to you. And and during coffee with God this week, um, I shared a lot of messages, or the main message that I shared to in the middle of the week was, you can't separate growth from birth. Once something's born it grows automatically. And, and immediately we think of babies, we think of children that we give birth to. It's not enough that we just celebrate the birth, that we just get all excited about the birth of the new baby. It actually, the whole process of flowing out of the birth is the growth to adulthood uh, of that child, that son or that daughter. And, and so... As I was thinking about that and as I was sharing messages uh, every morning on Coffee with God on how we spiritually grow and what we need to have in place in order to grow, to help one another to grow and to grow ourselves in the Lord spiritually, I, I read Philippians 3 in one of my quiet times and from verse 17. And this really just spoke to me and this was the beginning of this message that the Lord laid on my heart to share with you this morning. Brothers, join in imitating me and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. For many of whom I have often told you and now tell you even with tears, walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. The end is destruction. Their God is their belly and their glory and their glory in their shame with minds set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven and from it we await the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body 
by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. And then chapter 4 verse 1 says, Therefore, my brothers and sisters whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm thus in the Lord, my beloved. And it really, really impacted me. It really hit me hard when I was thinking about how we as a church often celebrate new birth. Um, we celebrate people coming to Christ. We celebrate salvation. We celebrate people giving their hearts and their lives to Jesus and calling him to be their Lord and their Savior. And, and yet we don't get as excited and we aren't as focused all the time um, to their growth and to their development and to their discipleship. And yeah, Paul writes and he says, I've written to you and I've spoken to you about people who started off following Christ and yet are now right with tears, with, with, with weeping, with crying in me. That they've lost their faith. They, 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 their belly has become their desire and they set their minds on earthly things. And, and as I was thinking of, of my years of ministry and my years of, of being a Christian, of walking and getting to know people who accepted Jesus Christ, got excited about Jesus Christ, got excited about the church of Jesus Christ, got excited about having God in their lives and the Holy Spirit leading them and, and filling them. And, and, and they grew and they, and, they, and they actually ministered and they showed potential. And, and there was such in, in, incredible growth in their lives. And then over time, it's as if it became boring. It became humdrum. It became, and their focus was lost on, on the things of the kingdom, on the things of God, on Jesus Christ as their number one focus and their number one priority. And I can name names of people who I walked with and did ministry with who are now no longer born again children of God by the fruit of their lives. Somewhere between birth and before death, they've stopped living for Jesus Christ. And they've lost their salvation. They've lost their faith. As I was thinking about that, this message was birthed in me and, and, and the Lord took me to Matthew chapter 7. But I want to, before I go to Matthew 7, chapter 4 verse 1 of Philippians, Therefore, my brethren, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm thus in the Lord, beloved. And, and my entreaty, my encouragement, my, my call this morning, my uitroep for ochen, is that ons nie moog sal word, for Jesus Christus in ons levens. Hy sal nie allerdaags word nie, hy sal nie net, net, net deel van ons levens so raak, dat, dat, dat hy nie die prioriteit blij nie. That we become so used to him, that we actually treat him with contempt. The English have a saying, familiarity breeds contempt. Where, where we, we just seem to lose the awe and the wonder. And we just accept as common and every day that which is part of our lives for any length of time. And and you can apply it to marriage. You can apply it to, to anything where your wife is uh, the one you date and the one that you, you set priorities by and, and you live and you can't live without her. You're going to die if she doesn't say yes. And then five, seven years into the marriage, that first love, that that passion, that, that, that wonder has gone out of the relationship. Um, and that happens spiritually with us. And that's what I want to speak to this morning out of Matthew chapter 7. Now Matthew, uh, Matthias 7 is eindelijk deel van, van die bergprediking van 5, 6 en 7, die hoofdstukke. En, en Jesus is bezig om vir die Christen en die kerk wat, wat hy gaan stig en wat wat deel van, van hierdie beweging gaan wees, is hy bezig om vir hulle 
die fundamentele leren te gee van wat is dit om deel van die koninkryk te word. En hier, aan die einde van 7, ons gaan van, van vers 13 lees, tot die einde van die hoofstuk, maar in hoofstuk 7 is hy bezig om vir ons, wat ek hier sien, as, as twee is, die concept van, dat is twee paaie, dat is twee boodschappen, dat is twee groepen mensen. en hy sê, jy is of deel van die een, of jy is deel van die ander, jy, jy luister of na die een, of jy luister na die ander boodschap. jy is of op die pad, of jy is op die pad, maar dat is twee paaie, en allemaal is op een pad, maar kom ons begin daar, en, en ek wil dit gebruik om, voor ons niet voor ogen weer te sê, besef niet waarmee is jy bezig, word niet bykie stil, voor die Heere, en hoor, uit sy woord uit vir ogen, hoor hoe roep hy, hoor hoe, hoe smeek hy eindelijk, hoe pleit hy, dat ons moet net besef, dat daar realiteit is, wat, wat vir die eeuwigheid staan, en dit is, daar is een eindbestemming, vir elk een van ons, na die dood, of na sy hemel, uh, uh, wegrapen, nadat Jesus kom om ons te haal, of nadat ons gesterf het, maar die eeuwigheid leef voor, en daar is twee bestemmings, daar is twee eindbestemmings, waar ons gaan wees, en wat die verskil maak, is die keeses wat ons, terwijl ons leef, maak elke dag. The things that determine uh, our, our end destination in eternity. And, and two weeks ago, I spoke about the reality of hell. And last week, I spoke about the power of God's grace. And both of these, the power of God's grace and the reality of hell, are two destinations that the one is hell and the other one is heaven. The one is, the one is destruction and the other one is joy. And these are realities that that are based on the real decisions that we make and how we live every day. So Matthew 7 verse 13 says, Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction, and those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it Few. So the first point that I want to bring home to you is there are two roads. There are two ways that a person walks in and both are leading to a destination. And, and the word tells us very clearly that the way is easy and the gate is wide that leads to destruction. That says that many people are finding themselves walking along in the crowd minding uh, the conversation and being part of and not being aware that they're on the road to destruction. Hard is the road and narrow is the gate that leads to life and few will enter into it. And, and that's what I said when I spoke about hell. God had to, God had to increase, he had to enlarge hell. Because so many people ended up going, he didn't plan that so many of those whom he created and gave life to would end up in hell. And yet here we have affirmation. I want to say to you this morning, as you're going through life, and, and ons is in hierdie inperkingstijd, en ons is bees om te reageer teen oor wat die regering vir ons sê, ons mag en mag nie doen nie, en of ons werk te mag gaan of nie, of ons ons hare mag snij of nie, dankie vir my haar snij laas week, um, uh, dankie toch, het was tyd. Um, uh, maar, maar ons is in hierdie inperkingstijd bezig om net te beweeg en ons moet net voorzichtig wees dat ons nie omkyk en sien op wat de pad is ons eindelijk. Because we're on a road. There's no neutral road. There's either a road that leads to destruction or there's a road that leads to life. And de- depending on which road you're on, that's the direction you're going in. I've said to you and I say it again, don't listen to a person's words, look at their belt buckle. Look at the direction that their belt buckle is going in. And if this is the way to life and to Jesus, in Jesus and to God, and my belt buckle is moving in this direction, it doesn't matter what I say, the direction that I'm going in will determine my end destination. If, 
if my belt buckle is going this way and the, and the road is wide and the gate is wide and the road is easy and it's going to destruction, then my belt buckle is taking me to the destination that I'm going to end up in. Irrespective of what I say, irrespective of what I'm, what I'm trying to put out through my words. It's the direction of my belt buckle. It's the direction of the road that I'm in that will determine where I end up. And too many people, too many people are walking on the wrong road. But they're in the crowd. And it feels right and it feels good. But it's not about our feelings. It's about the truth of Jesus Christ who says to us, <laughs> says to us in John chapter 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. And so the way is quite easy for us to determine. Am I on the road that Jesus Christ has enabled me to be on? Am I heading in the way of Jesus Christ? Or am I heading on the way to destruction? But there's not only two roads. There's two messages. There's two messengers. If we carry on reading in verse 15 of, of Matthew chapter 7, it says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will recognize them by their fruits. As we open ourselves to the message of truth. And, and I mean, just think about this whole pandemic and this whole COVID-19 Corona 90, COVID coronavirus. It doesn't matter which newspaper or which news program you listen to. There are so many experts giving various opinions. At the outset of of this, when, when, when our president first spoke and, and the, the Medical Advisory Council first did some models, they were talking about between 70,000 and 400,000 people dying in South Africa alone. Now they're talking about between 10,000 and 40,000. Um, they've had to readjust their figures. Um, you, they talk about whether in parking die moeite waard is en wat is, wat baat die mens uit in parking en hoe lang mag, moet het wees, en dan strui hulle onder mekaar, dan sê die een die een ding en die ander ander ding, en and I think the best thing or the best piece of advice that I ever heard was the most certain thing we can be certain about in these uncertain times, is the uncertainty of the times we are living in. And my friends, spiritually speaking, we are bombarded with, with lies and semi-lies and semi-truths about so many different things pertaining to the Word of God and to, and to, and to our spirituality and to our religious beliefs and to what we must believe and what we mustn't believe and how we interpret and how we don't interpret. And, and here the word of God says to us, beware. There are false prophets. There are those who are driving a hidden agenda. And again, the word of God says to us, just be aware. Like I said in the first point, be aware of which road you're on. Be aware who you're listening to and what you're listening to. Don't just listen to the words of the mouth. Look at the belt buckle. Look at the fruit that the person is producing. And it's so important to know that, that, that we need to, to look at the lives of the people that we're listening to. 
Because people can say such incredibly good things and yet not live it out. And my friends, I don't know how many times I've said it and I say it again. People who own bicycle magazines and have bicycles in their houses but never ride the thing are not cyclists. People who have golf sticks in their house, golf clubs in their house, but never play golf are not golfers. People who have Bibles and commentaries and books and don't have a relationship, don't live the truth of those books and those commentaries are not people that we should be listening to. The Bible says they're false prophets. It's important that we look at the fruit of a person's life. someone who's just got a degree and just walked out of university without doing any practical application of the education that they've received. You all know. They have the theory. But when it comes to the practice, there's just something lacking, something missing between the theory and the doing. And we must be careful that we listen to the right messengers, that we look at the fruit. Because unfortunately, the Lord allows the tares to grow amongst the wheat. The enemy comes and and sows in the field where the word of God has been sown. The enemy comes and he sows tares. He says, I saw on Christ. And 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 he says, I saw on Christ. Maar wanneer ons snoei, dan gaan ons kyk. En jy sê, they'll be known by their fruit. And those that don't produce fruit, those that don't have a fruit in their words, in their ministry, they'll be cut off and thrown into the fire. And the fire is the reality of hell that I spoke about two weeks ago. So there's two messengers, but not just two roads or two gates and two messengers or two messages but Matthew 7 from verse 21 talks about two groups of people and yeah I want you to listen especially hard verse 21 says not everyone who says to me Lord Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven but the one who does the will of my father who is in heaven On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works or miracles in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. And this is the part that really hits home to me. This is the part that that really grabs me and and, and and concerns me. Because here, we, we have spelled out for us very clearly that there are people that, that fall in love with the cause of the church. They, they fall in love with, with the things that, that are important to Jesus. And that Jesus wants to correct and Jesus comes to minister to and comes to make a difference in. And and they get involved in that. But, But they don't fall in love and they don't get involved in the Christ of the cause. And it doesn't help how much we're involved in the cause if we don't know Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. The cause is not going to get us into heaven. It's the Christ that gets us into heaven. It's like cold water in my face. When they come and they say, did we not call you Lord, Lord? In other words, did we not worship? Did we not sit in the church service? Listen to me this morning. You're listening to a service. You're listening to a sermon. And, and it's a church environment. You're, this is, you, you sit in church. And you worship. 
You praise God. You say, Lord, Lord. And he says, I didn't know you. Be still before the Lord this morning. And, and just allow the Holy Spirit to search your heart. And let him point out if you're, if you're just paying lip service, if you're just bringing sacrifice, but you're not bringing yourself to the cross. You're not bringing yourself to the cross. Did we not preach? Did we not teach? Did we not read? In other words, it says here, did we not prophesy in your name? You attend Bible studies. You even lead Bible studies. You teach people out of the word of God. As the opportunity, you teach Sunday school. You're involved in youth work. You, you even get to give a sermon every now and again. Whatever it is, be careful that you're not one of those people who are saying, did we not prophesy in your name? And he's saying, I did not know you. Hear me this morning or hear my heart this morning. This is so important that, that we, we take stock and we allow the Lord to, to show us. He says, did we, did we not cast out demons? Did we not do mighty works or miracles in your name? Were we not involved in, in making a difference, in setting people free, in feeding the hungry, in, in raising the sick, in praying over those that are, are, are caught up in their sins, counseling and ministering to people and doing all the right things and making the right noise and getting involved in the cause if you're not doing the will of God the Father? What's the will of God the Father? That you believe in the one whom he sent, Jesus Christ. Then Jesus says, I do not know you. Please hear me this morning. Turn to 1 John 3. In Johannes 3. We begin to ask you a verse. A very, very important verse. Verse 9 from 1 Johannes 3, 9 and 10. 1 John 3, verses 9 and 10. Just listen to this. No one born of God, no one born of God practices sinning. Can I, can I just illustrate that for you? You know, uh, uh, on family camp uh, many years ago, I, I, I gave the illustration. It just comes back to me. Every time I read this word, practices sinning. People who play soccer, and, and they practice uh, penalty kicks or they practice tree kicks. Um, girls who, who, women who play netball, who practice shooting. You know, that you, see a, you see a netball line on the court and you just can't walk past it. You have to, you have to pick it up and, and there's the pole and you have to just shoot it in the hoop. And you go fetch it and you come back. And, and you just have to practice shooting in the hoop again. And you go get it and you come back and you just practice shooting and you go fetch it and you come back and, and you practice and you practice and you practice and you practice. I don't know if I'm getting it right. It's something like that. You know, you practice, 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 getting it in the hoop, getting it in the hoop. And if you're in soccer, if you're in rugby, you set up the ball and you practice kicking to the poles. If you're the hooker, you practice throwing in all the time. You practice throwing in all the time. You practice throwing in. If you're a jumper, you practice the different moves to, to get the muscle memory, to get it part of how good you are, how you better yourself in the, in the basic skills of the sport. No one, no one born of God Makes a practice of sinning. Listen to me. Take stock of where you've been. Have you practiced propping yourself up at the bar counter? And getting the action just right? You don't spill a drop? Have you got it down to a fine art? Practicing how to skin it about somebody without making it sound like skinner. I don't want to really share this. It's not my place to share it. But have you heard about Tony so-and-so? It's terrible what's happening to 
wow, can you hear the concern? Can you, but what am I actually doing? I'm just letting you know the juicy details about what's happening in her life and I'm skinnering. And we practice sinning. Think about what you've been doing the last couple of weeks. Look at the pattern of your life. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning. Listen to this. For God's seed abides in him. You'll know a tree by the fruit. Because what you sow is what you'll reap. You don't go and fetch grapes off a thorn bush. You go get it off a grapevine. Because a vine was planted, grapes will come naturally. And as you look at the fruit of a person's life, as you look at the fruit of your life, no one born of God, no one born of God makes a practice of sinning. For God's seed abides in him. And he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. Born of water, natural birth, but born also of the Spirit. John chapter 3. By this it is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother. You see, God is love. God calls us to love him and to love one another as he loves us. And so what's the seed? What's the fruit of your life? Is, is God's seed in you? Is God's seed germinating in your heart, in your life? Because my friends, I don't want to spend years with you in church and getting to know you and walking with you and and you put on a front on a Sunday and you worship well and and you even prophesy and you even you even come alongside and you minister and there's a there's there's power in your ministry but it's because you sold out to the cause not to the Jesus Christ of the cause and God's seed is not in you and and when I'm not with you and, and when I'm not around you, that, that, that you practice sinning and not righteousness. And waste your time and my time. And at the end, when eternity opens up before you, Jesus is going to have to say to you, I do not know you. Because the road that you've been walking on is the wide and easy road. And the messages that you've been listening to have tickled your ears. And the people who've been giving you those messages don't have the fruit of righteousness. They just have the words that sound so good. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 7. As I close the sermon this morning. Verse 24 of Matthew 7 is the ending of the Sermon on the Mount. And here comes the title of my sermon. Build on the rock for the storms. You see, Satan wants to test you. Satan wants to grab a hold of you. Satan demands of God that he shakes your faith. And what's amazing, I shared it on Friday in Coffee with God, is when, when Jesus says to Peter, Satan has demanded time to sift you. Jesus says, I pray that your faith will not be lost. And that when you turn back, you will strengthen your brothers. He doesn't say, I said to him, he cannot test you. Jesus doesn't say Satan's not going to test you. He says, I pray that your faith will hold in the testing. 
So storms are going to come into your life. Storms are going to hit you. You're going to be shaken in your faith. I'm, I'm shaken in my faith through the storms and the tests and the trials that, that God allows me to go through. Everyone who then hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on the house. But it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. Verse 26 says, And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. There's two roads. Take stock of which one you're walking on. And be honest with yourself. There's two messages. Are you listening to the people who affirm your lifestyle of sin, who, who tell you what you want to hear? And as you look at the fruit of their lives, you, you're seeing that the fruit doesn't match what they say they are. And by virtue, your life can then also contain fruit that doesn't belong there. But it's okay because the message you're listening to says it's okay. Shame in this life. Who's going to be sinless? One John chapter three says, "We cannot keep on practicing sin. Righteousness needs to be a fruit because the seed of God is in our hearts, not the seed of this world, not an earthly focus, not the passions and desires of our stomachs. In other words, the physical lusts and the physical desires and the physical passion and the physical wants, like the woman at the well in Samaria." Five husbands and the one that she was living with wasn't her own because she was leaning into the passion, trying to, trying to quench a thirst in her that only God can quench with living water. But there's two groups of people. Don't be one who plays church and follows the cause. Stop. And allow Jesus Christ to grab hold of you. Matthew 6 verse 33 says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. And why do I say that? Because there's a house that's built on the rock. The Lord knows that you have needs. The Lord knows that you have desires. The Lord knows that you need clothing. You need food. You need a shelter of your head. The Lord knows and he wants to take care of you to the extent that you need to be taken care of. He doesn't want you to become a pauper and go live in a, in a desert. So if he does, he'll provide for you there as well. Just ask Isaiah. Elijah. Jeremiah. All of the prophets whom he called out. John the Baptist. Wild honey and locusts and bear skins as clothes. The Lord can provide in, in, in the worst of situations, but the Lord can provide in the best of situations and circumstances. As long as you're allowing yourself to be led to do his will. Seek his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. So in the light of the reality of hell, in the light of the power of God's grace that I preached last week, stop walking as if you're on the right road and make sure that you're on the right road. Stop listening to just any message, but allow the spirit to, to give you the discernment to listen to the truth of God's word and not man's fancies. Stop listening to false messengers. And stop living for the cause instead of for the Christ. Because as I read to you in Philippians, Paul says, I write to you with tears. I write to you weeping of those who I know 
And I've written to you about them before. I've told you that they're good men. They're good women. I'll die with them. I'll fight with them. I'll go to battle with them. I'll walk with them. I'll build a church with them. Who've now lost the way. And who've become earthly in their focus. Been driven by the desires and the passions of their bellies. And are are able to give excuse for their lifestyle. And their end is destruction. Can I ask two things this morning in closing? If you know me. Please check the road I walk. Please check those that I associate with and allow to teach me and to to shape me with their truth. Please hold me accountable for the fruit of my life. When you look at me, when, when you look at my lifestyle, will you please tell me whether you see Jesus Will you just see me play in church? For my sake. And then will you allow me to do the same for you? Will you allow me to call you to accountability? To not just get excited about the new birth. But to grow in your Christianity. Om te groei in your Christenschap. Mag, mag ek jou vrouw om my verantwoordbaar te hou, asjeblief van jou? En mag ek jou verantwoordbaar hou? En ons het mekaar nodig. Daar waar ons ons huise aan mekaar sit, is het op die rots is, of is het op die sand? En die storms, en dan gaan storms wees. Die storms van hierdie lewe gaan alles van ons wegvat, en ons gaan kaal daar op die strand, Staan. of ons gaan nog steeds binnen in ons huis stevig wees wat op die rots gebouw is en het kom daarop neer wat ze besluiten maak ons maar wie luister ons waarna toe is ons op pad op wat de pad loop ons let op naar die kyk in Jesus' oor wanneer jou op hom focus storms woed Mense strui, moor jy weet dit wat jy ervaar is reel. Soos jy focus op hom, voel jou as om hom makkeliker, want jy sink nie. Die storm slaan jou nie om nie. Jou voete is gevestig op Jesus die eeuwige rots. Staan stevig, staan gefokus, staan in hom, staan by hom, want, as jy weersien, is die storm verby en al wat staande bly, is jy en hy. Kom ons bid saam. Heere wat die voorrecht om net die woord weer sonder verskoning te verkondig. Dankie dat dat die woord so regheid met ons praat en sê, daar is twee paie, daar is twee boodskappe, daar is twee soot mense in die leven en ons moet net stilstaan en besluit en, 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 en net kyk op wat de pad is ons, waar naartoe beweeg ons, wat is die vrug, wat hang in die mense, na wie ons luister, en wat sy vrug le op ons eie boom, is ons nie bezig om vir ons te leeg nie, en te sê ons is een appelboom, maar hier hang een klompere, hier help ons, nou dat ons, nadat ons hier die woorde gehoor het, om ons huis op die rots te bou, nie op die sand. Lord, please help us to build our house on a rock. I pray for those who need to, this morning, decide. I'm on the wrong road, I'm listening to the wrong people, I'm living a lie, I'm following the cause, I think because I'm in church doing the right thing, but I, Jesus Christ is not Lord. And one day when, when I come before him, he's going to have to turn around and say, I do not know you. I pray for those this morning 
that your Holy Spirit will convict them in their hearts, in their souls, in their minds, in their thinking, in their actions, and that you would lead them to do the next right thing, which is to confess, to, to just stand still and confess their, their selfishness, their, their rebelliousness, their sinfulness, and to ask you to come in and cleanse them and restore them. Father, I pray for the church of Jesus Christ as we walk down the road, as we teach God's word, as, as we live lives that bear fruit of Christ, as we live out the will of God for our lives, that others will see it and be attracted and drawn to it so that we never have to say we knew people who once followed Christ but are now far away. That we don't have to weep and cry over people who we know. Give us, again, Lord, the boldness to speak truth in love, to reach those waar die pad buiste geraak het, om hulle, om hulle te bereik, om, om, om met hulle te praat, om hulle te gaan haal, en te sê tot hier nie verder nie. Kom terug. God, make us your instruments. Help us to do your will, to your glory, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful, wonderful week in the Lord. And, and know that as you walk the road, as you listen to his truth, as you build your house on the rock, as you get involved in Christ, not in the cause, the cause will take care of itself. The miracles will take place. The hungry will be fed. The, the prisoners will be set free as we focus on Christ. The who is so important. The why is so important. The what takes care of itself if we've got that right. May you be blessed in this week. Know God's presence. Know the assurance of his salvation and his continued discipleship in your life. In Jesus' name. Have a wonderful, wonderful week.